So we have around one third of the patients with diffuse large visual lymphoma that are either primary refractory or they relapse after first line therapy. Uh, some of them can eventually be cured with autologous stem cell transplant, but some of them are not transplant eligible or they relapse after transplantation. So basically, CAR T cell um, can achieve, I would say, uh, prolonged uh, duration of remission of around 40% in this situation of a uh, relapsed refractory patient with diffuse larvae cell lymphoma. So it basically represents a new um, and very promising tool for those patients that have already failed uh, more traditional strategic uh, treatment strategies. I would say that with the medium follow-up that we have now from the pivotal trial, I would say that some of the patients have already been cured with CAR-T, but we still have a significant proportion of patients that relapse after CAR-T cell therapy. And um, so we need to focus our attention on that in the near future. And there are several strategies that would eventually be uh, tackling this percentage of patients that relapse, eventually with new constructs that will be looking not only at uh, CD19, but CD20, eventually uh, combining CAR T cells with other treatment strategies that uh, will try to reduce the relapse rate. And I think that another important thing is that we need to understand which are the patients that have more probabilities to relapse, to try to identify them really very early. Uh, probably adding uh, minimal residual uh, disease techniques, for instance, the use of leaky, liquid biopsy, in addition to imaging strategies that it's what we are basically uh, using right now to um, evaluate patients uh, after CAR-T. There are other questions that we need to address, so probably we need to better establish which is the profile of the patient that will benefit most from the treatment. We need to decrease toxicity, so basically CRS and neurological toxicity. So um, there are some uh, quite clear information that if we uh, start treatment or eventually prophylaxis of these two complications, we are not affecting uh, the efficacy of CAR-T, but we are reducing the toxicity of the procedure. And I think that another important thing that we will need to focus our attention on is on bridging therapy. So many patients need bridging therapy uh, to be ready to receive the CAR-T in the best possible performance status and with the disease under control. And we really don't know which is the best breaching therapy for this patient. So efforts should be done also in looking into that.